No coffee today, folks. No coffee today. I'm gonna wait as we all start to trickle in. Hello. <laughs> I missed your name, but thank you for joining. How are we all doing today? Welcome to Smell It Sunday. And I have a different approach to describe the show today. Actually, I don't. This is a live show where we we talk about my main channel, The Candle Enthusiast, whether that be candle content, whether that be about aromatic adventures, about places, about things that we'd like to discuss, visits if it's a place, purchase if it's a thing. It's where we can get together and actually uh, talk, communicate, strengthen our communication, as, as I always like to say. And it gives me a chance to kind of fill in uh, with you guys what's been going on with my with my day-to-day -day life so that you are on up and up. Mark Smith, Mark Smith hasn't joined in in a long time. Happy to see you, Mark. And Carol, I think it was in the room as well. First thing is first, Angie Clementine, Angie Clementine. It's always nice to see that that smiling face on the screen. Uh, let me pull up you guys. You know that's always the first step. And to turn off the music. The music never really seems to fit the show. I haven't found a jingle, a song, that seems to fit a show called Smell It Sunday. Chris, how we doing today? So if I... Oh, that thumbnail. The thumbnails get worse and worse every day every day it is one of those sundays where it i mean you probably can't tell but depending on where you are you probably know what i'm talking about it's 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 cold it's warm because of the humidity in the northeast um it's rainy it's gloomy it's not a bad thing it's actually very nice but it has just been a very slow-moving day. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a little bit more relaxed, but we'll talk about that in just a few moments. Because, if any of you are wondering, uh, I am, through the very first part of my challenge, of my 10-week, that's right, 10-week uh, what I'm calling living enthusiastically. It's a 10 week challenge where I'm trying to get myself in a healthier place. I'm not talking about diet, just dieting and improving my diet. I'm talking about doing things that I've been neglecting that I know I should be doing, taking on responsibilities, organizing my life, getting my head screwed on straight, but yes, also making sure that I'm paying attention to my physical vessel, right? The, the body, because work uh, for a lot of us takes precedence sometimes, takes priority. Sometimes we don't have a choice. You know, we have to keep pushing the envelope every day uh, to make sure that by the end of the week, you know, we, we cross that finish line or at least get as close to it as possible. But uh, I've finally made the choice to say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I have to start making some permanent changes, not temporary changes, but some permanent changes. So I decided and I announced uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted the first episode of Living Enthusiastically on my main channel. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, it's really an introduction to what I'm going to do. I, I said that uh, I'm going to, like I said, Live a, live a healthier lifestyle. But every week I'm gonna take on one more hurdle, one more obstacle, increasing the difficulties of my challenge. And every week for the next 10 weeks, gonna, again, push that envelope and see by the end of the 10 weeks, take kind of a retrospective look and see what, what I accomplished, how I'm feeling. But the very first step was my green juice fast. So let me just fill you in for any of you, uh, any of you who don't know what this is because it sounds dangerous and it could be quite dangerous. And at times I felt like it was very dangerous. Um, 
Uh, a green juice fast is like any other fast, uh, like a water fast. Let's say, for example, some people do lemon juice. Uh, some people just don't eat. It's uh, the theory is it reboots your body. It uh, when you when you fast uh, or excuse me when you detox, you're, we know what that is, right? We're trying to get all of the poisons, the bad things we put in our bodies, the coffees, the fast foods, all of the things that maybe we shouldn't be putting into our body, or things that too too many things that we're putting into our body without moderation. We're trying to release that, get that out of our system, uh, but we easily. It's just a human nature. We could become addicted to so many things. For a good example, I am a passionate coffee drinker. I love coffee. I've always loved coffee. And uh, there's been times in my life where I've, I've consumed far too much coffee. I'll even admit that it was not, it was actually becoming a problem, but it's just, it's a bit, it's become a part of my personality. It's been uh, the fuel of my enthusiasm, not really. I think people, I think that's more of an assumption people have of me, that the coffee is why I'm always so excited and wound up. Um, but the green juice fast is nearly 100% greens. Greens are not vegetables, right? Greens like kale, spinach, leafy greens, dandelion greens, wheatgrass. Right? We talk about a lot of these, I talk about these, these aromatics in the show all the time. Uh, getting as much greens into your system and vegetables, uh, excluding a few veg ve ve veggies like potatoes and things like that. Um, and uh, so what I wanted to do was a seven week juicing, juice fast detox, where not a morsel of food would go into my body and all I would be doing is drinking green juice, not smoothies. So we're stripping away everything, all of the liquids, all of the nutrients, all of the micronutrients from the actual fiber of the plant-based materials and just drinking that. Santa is not with us today. I know Santa has been on hiatus. He has been you know, he's he gets a lot of his homework done, I suppose, for the holiday season around this time of year. And I'm getting a notification that I'm live. It's funny how I get a notification that I'm going live. So I'll swipe that away. So before I continue with how my my first week went, let me address everybody. We have a good 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 little chat room today. How's we have a good group of people? We always have a good group of people. Uh, Mark, Nancy, am I forgetting anybody? Nicole is here, Hobble Kitty. And blend it like Brian. Gagan, I don't know, I don't know how else to pronounce that. And I see Laura, I see Laura's here. Did anybody, has anyone ever pronounced your name Lara? This is gonna be Horror Queen I'm, I'm speaking of. L Laura is with us, and Laura, I have, I have goodies for you. They are, they're, they're coming. Don't think that I forgot. I would never forget. Um, this week has just been a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a whirlwind. Uh, if we don't know Hara Queen or Lara, um, she uh, won a little, I guess, uh, contest um, for, um, on our uh, Facebook fan group. And uh, our lovely moderator, Rachel, has sent her, uh, I believe, a wax melt, Yankee Candle wax melt, or melt cup, excuse me. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a little care package. And because I'm going to be, I, I got to be doing more of that. Now that the summer's coming around, uh, I got to be start, I got to start doing more giveaways. I remember how fun it was last year. And it was kind of around this time. It's getting close where we did the moonbeams on pumpkin um, giveaway. And that was so much fun. So much fun. We got Lou. Lou is here. We have Aaron. Aaron? Aaron. It's Aaron. I know it's Aaron. And Amanda is here. Uh, Marianne. Marianne's here. See, I'm getting all your names straight. And if I forgot anybody, Rebecca's here too. Uh, if I'm forgetting anybody, 
uh, I apologize. But so today, today is going to be, I have some show and tell. I have some, as you guys might remember, I had a really wicked uh, Yankee candle like outlet session where I walked away with quite literally, I think six, seven bags of Yankee Candle products. And I'm realizing that I haven't really showed you a lot. Plus I have a lot of stuff that I had been acquiring um, through other means, some on eBay, some on Craigslist, things like that. And uh, so we have plenty of Yankee Candle stuff to talk about, but I did want to catch up on the living enthusiastically first. So please, I'm gonna try to throw out and Murray, Anne Marie, I called her Marianne. Damn, so close. Dang, 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 dang. I said dang. Um, um, but please try to throw out as many questions. I want to. I, I know I, I don't spend a lot of these, a lot of the time on these Sundays, addressing your questions. And today's a perfect day for it. Easy, relaxed, laid back. If you want to talk about Yankee Candle, you want to talk about films, if you have any questions about me personally, I'm an open book. I'm trying to fix this hair. Haircut is necessary. It's, it's a month past due, but I believe it or not, still haven't done it. And anyone who's out there, uh, Mark, Mark goes, any more eBay coming? Mark, I promised you there's eBay stuff and there is eBay stuff. Um, uh, Marshmallow Zap's got a good question too, um, but um, I don't know why I'm, I'm not postponing it. I just I want to, you know, when you do eBay, it's it's a lot easier to do a bunch of stuff at once. And a lot of people have reached out to me and said that you know money is kind of tight right now, and you know tax season wasn't all that far away so i feel like you know what let's get everyone a chance to breathe i got some good stuff to sell i want to give everyone an equal opportunity to get their hands on new stuff old stuff rare stuff weird stuff things that are completely candle related things that are related to the channel um uh so ebay will be coming soon but the best way the, the, the best thing to do is to go to uh, my eBay account, it's gonna be, the link is gonna be found in all my videos, and make sure you follow. So this way you'll get a little push notification every time I post something. Uh, now let me go back a little bit. Marshmallow Zap, what do you think of Kringle, uh, Kringle Candles Unicorn Poop? You've heard me correct, people, in case you thought it was a joke or in case you didn't see Mike Kittrich's the third uh, post on Instagram uh, and a mass emailing uh, they're, they are releasing a candle in kind of like a, a I don't want to say baby blue, it's more of like a neon baby blue, if that's a thing, called Unicorn Poop. Really weird, and, and not a Kringle candle, it's going to be a part of their uh, country candle line or subsidiary. And I, uh, to be honest, I thought it was a joke at first. Uh, they, but they, they're actually, uh, they said it started as a joke, but they're actually doing pre-orders for it. The pre-orders ended Friday night, uh, but I'm sure there's going to be tons available. I don't know. I think it's fun. I think it's always good to throw in a monkey wrench every now and then. Throw in something that's going to break up the normal flow. And if it doesn't work, you repair it. But if it breaks and something interesting happens from it, then you can evolve and adapt to it. You know, maybe um, this is a great way for Kringle Candle to take a sidestep and say, you know what, we are a luxury-esque, we are, we portray ourselves at least as a luxury, I, I would consider Kringle as a, a luxury candles at consumer prices. Uh, we are a luxury company of quality, high quality and class, but it doesn't mean we can't have fun and laugh at the same time. So I am 100% on board with Kringle's decision to uh, purchase this candle. I put in my pre-order. Uh, we'll see what it's all about. I'm expecting that it's going to be 
kind of riding on the coattails of the idea of like like the Starbucks unicorn beverage and stuff like that, where it's gonna be sweet, it's gonna be tart, it's gonna be like candy, it's gonna be just a, a big bubblegum candy shop explosion, which is not a bad thing at all. So, um, and I've never burned a country candle before. I don't own a country candle. Well, I own I own the, the daylights, the samples, but I don't own an actual house warmer or apothecary jar. So I'm excited. If, uh, if you're, you think I'm lying, yes, that unicorn poop was real. I thought it was a joke too at first, Nancy. Uh, but um, I'm not sure when they'll be shipping out, but the pre-sale pre ended Friday night, and I don't know when they're going to be on sale for um, on the website and the main website or I'm sure they ha maybe even have them at Kringle Candle. Who was just at Kringle Candle? I think it was Rachel. I wonder if Rachel saw it there on display. The price was very affordable too. $19. That price point for a 22 ounce two wick candle from Kringle Candle. It's a good price. It's a good price, if you ask me. It's always a good price. What are the notes, says Angie Clementine. I don't think they release notes. I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I could be wrong, but they did not release any notes on it. But again, I do think it's going to be like a Starburst, Skittles, Smell the Rainbow, taste the rainbow not smell the rainbow but i say smell the rainbow kind of this uh candy-esque fruit driven fragrance i could be wrong you know it could smell like unicorn poop and the joke would be on me there are notes says mark smith mark uh or if anybody wants to grab those notes and post them just copy and paste them into the comment section That'd be, we'd all appreciate that. I'm not saying, Mark, you have to do that. <laughs> but if anyone wants to go and grab those notes and bring them to us. Uh, so, and, um, da, 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 da. I've already started my Christmas candle purchases and I was interested in Kringle Candle Christmas. Would anyone recommend it? Yes, Chris. Chris, I would highly recommend Christmas. Christmas. God, it's so hard, though. There's so many that are, like, single-name Christmas candles. There's Kringle. There's a candle. Is it called Kringle Christmas? Uh, there's Christmas. Um, when it comes to Kringle, um, and, and, and I'll, I'll na narrow it down more specifically, when it comes to Kringle Christmas. I mean, they're just, or just winter fragrances in general. Man, they just, they just knock it out of the park every, every time. It really is a shame that I don't get to talk about Kringle Candle more. I would love, I would love, I've, I've tried and I'll always keep trying, but I want to do a little bit more of an in-depth uh, video documentary style with Kringle Candle. Um, whether that be with their, their marketing director, whether that be with Mike Kittrich the third, I'd love to just sit down with someone and just, just talk basics, just basic, basic questions about the philosophy of the company, how the, I'm not, I don't, I'm not looking for any trade secrets, but how the, 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 the company functions, like. Is there a research team? Is Mike, Mike K, let's call him, or Mick, let's call him Mick for short. Is he coming up with these ideas or they, do they have a conference room where they um, snowball ideas? How long does it take for them to kind of bring a conception, an idea to life? How long do they give it before they pull the plug if they decide to retire it? Okay, so Nicole, glad, uh, very, very great, uh, graciously uh, got us the note. So Unicorn Poop by Country Candle, subsidiary of uh, Kringle Candle. Top notes of Sherbert. 
I know some people pronounce that differently. Sherbert Sunrays. Okay, so we're getting playful here. Sweet cream, mid notes of cake, citrus, moonbeams. Uh oh. Sugar, tree fruits. Tree fruits. Tree fruits would be like apples and, and, and pears. Um, and base notes of essence of sprinkles. Essence of sprinkles. So they're obviously having fun with this. Exotic florals, fruits, oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen is a fragrance is, is a fragrance fragrance note. Oxygen. That that's that that is it's funny. It's it's funny. And I like it. I think I like it. And water flower. So once again, Sherbert Sunrays, sweet cream, cake, citrus, moonbeam, sugar, tree fruits. Uh, essence of sprinkles, exotic florals, and fruits, oxygen, water flowers. Wow. Okay, so I'm guessing they were trying to make something, and they stumbled upon an interesting scent. And instead of throwing it away, they thought, hey, you know, it'd be fun to kind of release this, not as one of our... Um, release this one as a more playful one that steps out of character for a bit but they're obviously having fun with those fragrance notes um, yeah so mermaid so I, this is where did Angie mention yeah, I thought we were moving on to mermaids now. Yes, mermaids seem to be very popular. The mermaids have always been popular for me. I love mermaids. Uh, and Hobble Kitty says, yes, mermaids are swiftly becoming the new hotness. But those darn unicorns just keep holding on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mermaid Lagoon was a candle that Rebecca, I know she's probably listening in if she's not in the chat room. Uh, she she brought it to my attention. I don't keep on top of the news for like Bath and Body Works and White Barn products. Not that I have a problem. I just like, you know, that's not some. It's not a part of my daily routine. Yankee Candle, you know, uh, some point during the day I do my research just to make sure that nothing is popped or leaked uh, on the internet somewhere. And if there's information or if someone is reaching out to me with some information, I kind of collect it and gather. But I don't do the same thing with Bath and Body Works. And they had a candle that was supposed to be a test candle, Mermaid Lagoon. You probably have heard of it, some of you. And I called, I can't give a number, but I, I literally called every single one of, of the Bath and Body Works and a huge radius of my like home base. So we're talking Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, um, uh, even I even ventured uh, over into Ohio and but this was a while ago and nobody had it so if anyone has that please share that on the Facebook group if anyone has found it or knows more information about it and uh, share your your impressions don't be afraid to share your sensory evaluation and use your own language some people say well I don't know how to verbalize what I smell Use your own language. It's okay. We're all great communicators. Scott was expecting some earthy tones on that unicorn. Marshmallow Zap says maybe they're mocking Yankee Candle um, in their colorful notes. You know, I can't deny it. I can't, I can't say that that's not a, a plausible thing. Especially moonbeams. Essence. Essence of sprinkles. It seems like maybe they're having fun at someone's expense. Mark is taken off already. He wants to know what's going on with eBay. And then he takes off. Mark, Mark, Tanya, Tanya, if you're there too, and the family, uh, eBay will be coming soon. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was a good time for everyone to post. 
a lot of the stuff that I have. But have a wonderful day, Mark, and we'll talk to you soon. Mermaid, Mermaid Urea might be the next Kringle Candle, says An Angie Clementine. Um, and Rebecca says, Mermaid Lagoon will be out on the floor after Mother's Day. Awesome. I like that. Mermaid Lagoon. That's a good name. You have to give, you have, whether you like Bath and Body Works, I think most people like Bath and Body Works. There's no reason not to, I don't think. Uh, that's a, I think that's a really cool name. And there's something about... I worked on a, a side project long time ago. It was a personal project. It was not a professional project. But I, I uh, the first wine I personally ever made, like with my hands, it was a garage kitchen thing. It was a small production thing. It was for me, friends, co-workers. Um, but I named, it was a rosé of Cabernet Sauvignon. The grapes actually came from Napa Valley. It was a rosé of Cabernet Sauvignon. It was a 2000, what was it? It was a 2000, 2000, it had to be a 2012. It was a 2012. And, um, the name, I named the wine Lady in the Lake. So Mermaid Lagoon, Lady in the Lake. Kind of similar and it was good it was good it was slightly effervescent because i had failed to completely stop the fermentation so the bottles were starting to pressurize so what that meant was we we meaning my friends my roommates and i had to drink all of this rosé over a very short period of time It was a fun couple days. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get to this. How, first of all, look at my face. My dark circles are there. The lighting is terrible. Okay? I don't know about you, but I think my face looks like healthier in some way whether that be my skin just being like tighter and the reason why i'm talking about this is because i did complete the seven day juice fast so here th this is how it broke down now if anyone doesn't i'm kind of spoiling what the video the video that's coming out is going to illustrate um and i'm sorry that it's kind of this video is being postponed it was it's, they're supposed to come out weekly but you have to understand that I was, it was a very, it was not an easy uh, thing to do to do this seven day thing, film it, and then actually edit it. There's a lot of stuff. I want to make this a, like a really, really good one. Hopefully, not that I, I don't, I didn't like the first one, but I want this to pull in a lot of non candle people. Um, maybe, you know, other people who are trying to experiment on s similar things like juice fasting. So I, uh, I purchased all the ingredients. This requires buying tons of green, tons of vegetables. The only fruits that I allowed myself uh, with Granny Smith apples because they're low in sugar and lemon, which mm, is not really that much sugar there at all. So I was drinking on average four quarts of this juice a day, sipping on it throughout the day. Um, first day, fine. Second day, very bad. It was very bad. And uh, I have to say, most of the day, I just could not really... I was just trying to keep myself calm. Because remember, your body's withdrawing from caffeine. The body's saying, where are all these triggers that are usually pulled? Where is that, that, that piece of chocolate? Where is that, that, that bowl of cereal? Where is that... Those, those, those sweeter fruits that you usually have. And your body is starting to panic. And I have to say, there was a point, I'm not going to say when, but there was a point where I threw in the towel. And I felt like, if you saw my first video, I felt, after filming that video, and kind of being up on this podium talking 
to the Hudson River. I felt like it was a huge statement that I was saying, I'm going to do this for better or for worse, come hell or high water. I am going to do this. And I failed. And you can imagine how I'm sure this happens to a lot of us um, where we have such high expectations, su such high hopes. We have such confidence in something that we want to do. And not only, you know, in, in some cases do things go wrong, but in this case for me, it went terribly wrong. Like, I just, I'm thinking to myself, how, how am I going to do this? Because, you know, I, I failed. And now how am I going to address everybody and say, well, I was saying I was going to be super strong and willful. And I just, I you know, I slipped and fell hard, Not literally, but you know what I mean, made a mistake. And while I was wallowing and just not sadness, but just kind of like, oh, God, what am I going to do? I, you know, I, was, I have all these plans to shoot these videos and how am I going to recover from this? How am I going to explain it to everybody? How am I mentally going to get back to that place of where I am confident? that I can stick on a very regimented routine for 10 weeks. And after, you know, talking with family and talking with friends, and uh, I will give a, a big uh, shout out to Monica Carlson, my sister-in-law. Uh, it was as simple as this. She said this in a text message. She goes, why just, just try it again? And I was like, wait a minute. That was never even, that never even crossed my mind. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, okay, so I'm out in the outfield and I go for this fly pop to catch it and I drop the ball. That doesn't mean that I don't continue with the game, right? So I said to myself, all right, let's just try this again, but change things up. You know, let's, let's put myself in a different environment instead of like sitting down, not occupying my mind, and trying to keep myself calm, let's actually, let's get at, let's walk, let's do stuff, let's keep the mind engaged, let's tire the body, because sleeping was really the hardest part, was falling asleep. And um, I did, and then, um, I'm not gonna say it was easy, but for seven days and three hours, I did not put a morsel of body in my food, only the green, juice again not smoothies guys not smoothies not like a blender we're talking about a juicer i got it right here um and uh so okay i'll give myself one of those for congratulations you you made it i did it but the, what's more important is oh my god what a wake-up call what a wake-up call now i checked with several doctors, two doctors, maybe not several, a couple doctors. I had three checkups. I had my blood work taken to make sure I was prepared for all of this because if I was going to do this and, and then put it on YouTube, I wanted to make sure that it was doing it in a healthy fashion so that people understand that I'm not just putting my body in jeopardy. My main concern was if, you know, like I, I, we, I think we all know that I have like blood sugar issues. <laughs> And I have a coffee addiction. Uh, I didn't want to put my heart, my anything biologically uh, in trouble. So um, I, I took all the precautions that I could and I did it safely. And I can't tell you how good I feel. I'm not kidding. Today, like I said, I wish I had a little bit like it was a big, brighter, sunnier day because I could like go outside and show you how much energy I have. But I have not been juicing for three days, but I've just been so easily converted to a vegetable plant-based diet. Um, I felt like I could have done the juicing longer. In fact, I, 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 uh, I considered whether to take those seven days and skip like going to 10 days and like pushing it to 20. But I really wanted to move forward and not just stick on green juice. I wanted to tackle other obstacles. Plus... When you're putting just juice in your body, you have, okay, you have energy, you're, you feel good, but like if I were to go like sprint for 10, like 10 feet, 10 foot sprint, I would have collapsed because that's how, you know, low calorie 
it, uh, it was. So bottom line was first several days, 72 hours, let's put it that way, are horrible, are horrible. I mean, I wouldn't want uh, those feelings on uh, my worst enemies. I really don't have any enemies, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Uh, but I think the reward of getting through it and then actually feeling great on the other side um, made it one of the most eye-opening experiences. I've always, yeah, I think we've all heard people who've done these things, crazy things, uh, you know, the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and its sequel, it's been out there for, God, I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's, it's probably eight years it's been uh, out there where a guy did this for 60 days. And, um, but um, I always wanted to do it. I think, excuse me, I attempted to do it several times in my lifetime and I just really, I didn't have, like you guys, I didn't have someone to promise it to that I was gonna stick to it. So I think having you guys was a way for me to really just like, I can't, I gotta, I gotta keep going because they're gonna be disappointed if I don't do it. And man, uh, I just, I can't tell you how great I've been feeling other than the allergies. The allergies, because spring just suddenly appeared a couple days ago. Uh, besides the allergies, I feel great. The appetite is gone. I haven't, I've had maybe three cups of coffee. Three cups, I mean like eight ounces cups over the course of the past 10 days. And um, I, I can't tell you how wonderful I feel. So what happens now? Um, like I said, I, I've, I've moved on to uh, veggie, uh, plant-based diet and lean proteins. Uh, a lot of people say, ah, oh, you should go this way or you should go this way. This is what I feel comfortable with. Lean proteins like fish or uh, uh, white meat, chicken, chicken breast. Um, and uh, four ounces twice a day of the protein and just raw veggies, nothing cooked, nothing cooked, just, I mean, the, the veggies, just just all raw uh, protein, shake, meal replacement, no dairy, no gluten. Uh, um, I'm even trying to keep this really low carb and and uh, I, I can't tell you, I'm, 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 I'm more excited to say, instead of, I'm not, I'm not so much excited to say like, oh, look at me, look what I did. I'm excited to say that I got, I had results. Like, it worked. It worked. I feel fantastic. Uh, so if anyone w is willing to try, wanting to try, has always wanted to try, but has always been curious, or maybe there's people in your life who keep saying, Oh, it's a dangerous thing to do. It's it's voodoo, you know. It's these these contemporary nutritionists saying things, uh, doing these extreme things to your body. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't have that 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 view anymore. I the only thing I recommend is that you make sure you consider your own physical conditions. Uh, that you do see a physician, a doctor. Make sure you get permission from a professional. Tell them what you're going to do and do it right. Like, don't starve yourself. Um, but as far as weight loss, I don't think, I mean, the scale doesn't say anything. Uh, but like I said, I was pointing this out before. I feel maybe it's just, maybe it's my brain, but that's not a bad thing either. My brain is looking at my face and saying, "Hey, look, Shane, you don't you actually look a little bit you look a little bit healthier cuz I was getting I was getting pretty grotesque for a while as far as like really pale and really dark circles and just swelling all over the place." So, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And mentally feeling better is just as important says Horror Queen and I absolutely agree. And in this case, I think it is more of a, a mental, is more of a, uh, a mental triumph. It's a mental 
comfort. It's a mental hurdle. I feel better mentally. The stress is eased up. The anxiety, I'm just kind of, I actually sat down and I watched several hours of TV this week, uh, which is really, I know that sounds like, when I say it's hard for me to watch TV, people are like, oh my God, like, you know, uh, uh, that, that's like, how, how is it hard for you to watch TV? Well, it's hard for me to watch movies and TV or long period of time because it gives me anxiety that I should be working, I should be doing something. And I know that's not right because you need to give your body a, a time to disconnect and step away and enjoy yourself. And for the longest time, I just haven't been watching movies, I haven't been watching shows, but I've been putting more use on my Netflix um, the past few days. Um, and the longest time. And so I'm gonna kind of leave it at that. Uh, and uh, and uh, we'll see what the next step is. Next step for living enthusiastically is introducing, is introducing um, uh, physical activity. Physical activity, so the diet's gonna change, the physical activ activity is going to increase, but I'm also gonna throw in some surprises, other obstacles to challenge my brain and my body. Chris says, um, have you watched Stranger Things on Netflix? I, I think like everybody, I watched the first season and I, 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 you know, uh, although the trailer seemed to be right up my alley for season two, I, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I never think that there's a rush with these things. Uh, I probably will get to it at some point. I think it's a fun show. I really, I am a part of that generation, uh, like many of us. I mean, you don't even have to be part of the generation, but I just grew up, um... You know, my my older brothers were those kids in that show, you know. Um, in many cases, I was that kid, uh, those kids in that show. Uh, so it's very relevant as far as my childhood. I wasn't abducted or anything like that. No, I never, I never went, what do they call it? On upside down, the, on, what do they call it? I never went there. At least I don't think so. And the, not yet. Thank goodness. Yes, water Water is essential. I think you just find that out just um, naturally when you change your diet in a such extreme way because if you become dehydrated, you feel it, and it does not feel good. And for me, it, it manifests itself in the form of uh, sinus and migraine headache. Yeah, imagine having both at the same time with allergies on top of it. Um, Nancy says, don't laugh, everyone, but I love dancing with the stars. I don't think anybody will laugh at you for that. Um, I haven't ever really watched the show, um, but I love the idea of, you know, I think like most boys growing up dancing, I didn't want to do dancing, you know, it's like why well, I, um, dan uh, my, my, um, um, my family friends of ours, um, uh, when I was growing up, um, they used to be, uh, how do I say? It was a big family of the the dancing arts, and it wasn't a big thing to me. But something happened, like uh, in my twenties, late twenties and thirties, where I just became fascinated with dancing. I wanted to become Gene Kelly. I, like I, every time I see somebody tap dancing, if you see the movie, the artist is it the artist. Yeah. Um, uh, I saw that film, uh, Singing in the Rain is one of my favorite fil films, um, and uh, ballet, I love the, the classic Russian ballets, 
uh, and it's just so dancing really has become this thing where it's like, I don't I think I want to dance myself, but I, lo I love watching the art and I love watching the people who, who partake in the art form and the process behind it. It's like discovering musicals for the first time, only it's, it's dancing, not, not just singing. Um, so, um, I could see myself watching Dancing with the Stars. Better Call Saul, season three. I didn't know. I watched that first season, really liked it. And I knew it came back. I did not know it was on season three. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that was that was a that was a pretty 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 d dang good show, darn good show. Uh, I've been binging on Pretty Little Liars. Surprisingly good. Another one I haven't checked out, but one that I would not mind checking out. I love TV. For a while in my life, I thought my life was going to be working in TV. I had convinced myself that I was going to move to Los Angeles, get an agent, and become uh, a teleplay writer or, or writing for television, specifically sitcoms. I really, I really thought, like, as an adult, I thought to myself that, well, this is logically the next step, I said to myself at the time. And I um, <laughs> made several attempts, and none of them were good. If anyone checks out my IMDb page, you'll probably find out what I'm talking about. Anyone watch The Magicians? It's a fun fantasy show. That sounds great. I also thought I was going to be David Copperfield growing up. Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai, the Karate Kid kind of spin-off after all of these years. How cool is that? I would have been happy with just a trailer. Just seeing the trailer made me happy. But then now that there's going to be a whole series, I'm kind of worried how if there's enough there, there's enough nostalgia there to to keep keep that afloat but I'm optimistic I used to watch chopped all of the time I think I think I stopped watching the food network after culinary school I think after culinary school I just I think being in that environment like in the kitchen kitchen like restaurant kitchen kitchen uh, just there's a, you know, I, I love it, but it, it, I think it just, it's, it stresses me out. <laughs> yes, uh, Angie Clemens, you have an IMDb page. Yes, it's, 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 uh, there's a link. I have a link that's kind of hidden on the, my main channel. And I've conveniently for myself kind of, I don't have a picture up, so it's very easy to not know if it's me or not. But yeah, you'll see, um, I believe I am Shane Carlson number two, unless the number one retired. But when I finally got my IMDb page, um, 2005, I think was the, the big day. At that time, it was really hard to get one. Now, like anything else, it's not, it's not that challenging. Uh, if you've just worked on anything, you can get your name up on there. Um, but to, you know, that was that was a huge thing back in those days. So you can see the, 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 the there's a selection of the bigger projects that I've worked on on my IMDb page. Da, 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 da. What, first two episodes are free. Yeah, the Cobra Kai. If we're talking about that, I saw that. Uh, on YouTube Red, they're offering the first, at least, at least the first one I saw that was for free. How did I get into the culinary arts? My father was a, a Culinary Institute of America 
professor. So it's always been something I've been conscious of, but it was my just natural, um, I think the maker, I think we know now that I talked about this a couple times, I like to make things. That part of me, that, that, that part of my brain uh, also translates in the kitchen. And so when I really fell in love and became very passionate about the art of wine and wine making and talking about wine, uh, discussing wine, sharing wine, and the history of the beverage, when that really started to sink in, I knew that it was something I wanted to do. I didn't want to ignore it. So that was my that was my clever clever excuse for escaping Los Angeles. Um, um, nothing against Los Angeles, but uh, the movie industry and the film industry was just not something I could do full time and be a healthy person and be fulfilled. So I I ventured north up into. Well, first into Hyde Park. I was at Hyde Park, the Culinary Institute of America for about half a year. And then I moved to Napa Valley. And we all know that. And Napa Valley has a smaller campus of the Culinary Institute of America there. And that's where 90% of the wine students are located. And I was one of those wine students. First class of the first ever offered... Uh, wine degree at the Color, Insta uh, Color Institute of America, CIA. Yes, the CIA. Easter Parade. Nice one, Marshmallow. Agatha, Agatha Christie. The Tudors I never watched. Columbo, Columbo like research. Yes, I watched Columbo. I have not seen all of them. You know, you really do have to like thank. We really have to be grateful for things like Netflix these days. Like, when I was growing up, I Love Lucy was in syndication. I'll use I Love Lucy, for example. It was in syndication. Honeymooners, syndication. Three Stooges. By the time I was an older kid, it wasn't in syndication. Uh, All in the Family. Um, uh, the Dick Van Dyke Show. Uh, all of these classic sitcoms. The only time you could catch them was if you woke up at like 5 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday and recorded them which I did but they were heavily edited and when you have if you have an OCD child which I was I can't have an edited version of the real thing so what we did was my family purchased remember like Columbia House video or BMG music collections where you'd buy like buy so many CDs and they send you so many for free well Columbia House released a lot of the classic sitcoms. I use I Love Lucy, for example. You'd get three episodes per VHS cassette. Three episodes. If we go turn on the TV right now, we can watch a marathon of like nine episodes, right? Uh, this was before the days of Nick at Night. And, um, and... Though each VHS tape would cost $19.99 back in those days, in the 80s. $19.99. And my mother, I mean, I have to give her credit. I really do. She bought every single episode of The Honeymooners, every single episode of I Love Lucy, three episodes at a time at a price tag of $19.99 back in those days. Uh, so when I say that I grew up, my brothers and myself and my family, being television people, this is what I mean, um, that we, uh, you know, like I had seen every uh, I Love Lucy episode, um, all 182 episodes, I believe 182 episodes, plus the seven uh, comedy hours, can't forget about those, by the time I was like six years old.
And then, yeah, when Nick, uh, uh, Nick at Night came out, that was like a game changer, right? Because they did not edit the episodes, at least not a lot. And uh, you could sit there, they would have those block parties, those summer nights, where you'd watch, they could watch like six episodes in a row of like Tuesday night would be I Love Lucy, Wednesday night would be The Monsters, uh, Dick Van Dyke, so on and so forth. Yeah, so that Eric's saying, uh, my friend bought every episode of the cartoon Star Blazers for $800 in VHS when he was in high school. Yeah, so if you think about three episodes, a total of 182 episodes of I Love Lucy, three episodes each at 1999, you can do the math in your head, but that was not a small price tag. Uh, uh, the Little Rascals, Nicole, yeah, that was another one. I love The Little Rascals. Um, and um, not as much as The Three Stooges. Uh, but I, I, I still think some of those early, th those little rascal short subjects, like Jackie Cooper, those are hyst hysterical. They're, I mean, I don't know how they found such fantastically talented children in those days. Were children just funnier in those days? Or was it really thanks to the producers and the directors and the acting coaches. I don't know. Happy Days was a big part of my childhood as well. Gotta go now, uh, but have fun everyone. Bye Shane. Chris, have a great uh, day, a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. All right, so let, let's change gears. You guys keep going. But I do have a bag of Yankee Candle stuff. So some of you guys are itching to see what's in this bag. Uh, I'm going to show you what I have. There was uh, some rumors. Some rumors. Uh, and I don't want to discredit them at all. Because I am not... This I've never burned this candle before. But a lot of people were saying that uh, the upcoming Raindrops candle... Uh, for Yankee Candle for uh, this season was a repackage. Yankee Candle really, in my opinion, doesn't do repackages. They'll do a rehash. They'll take something that's similar, change it. I don't think I've ever can really say, unless like it's like candy corn versus Halloween treats versus trick or treat. Like, Sometimes the lines get blurred like that, but I don't think, I just, I've never experienced real, in my opinion, repackages. Again, there's always exceptions, like limited editions and stuff like that. But a lot of people were saying Enchanted Garden uh, was, uh, the Raindrops was going to be a repackage of this. And this one was just always one that, I, you know, I, I think that, you know, gnomes are cool. Garden gnomes. Never really got into my hands. I never made the choice to purchase one, and uh, I finally got it. And um, really lovely. This is this definitely has uh, that a lot of those outdoor smells that I gravitate towards. So I don't understand why I wasn't drawn to this sooner. But I don't think that this is. Not only do I not think this is a repackage of raindrops that we're going to be see coming up for the spring preview here in the U.S., already available in the U.K., um, but I don't even think it's all that similar, to be honest with you. Um, there's uh, uh, outside soil, again, mossiness, some green vegetation. Uh, but then there's a spice. There's that, that kind of peppercorn spice. That's hard to imagine. Think about uh, crisp fall night or autumn nights or autumn night in the UK. It has that, that kind of uh, spicy, bright, tickles your nose pepperiness to it. All at the same time with some... Um, I would say there's a decent amount of fruitiness in there. So I, I do want to take notes on this one, pick it apart, and uh, uh, evaluate it. 
And I know you guys are probably rolling your eyes at this point. Shane's like, he just said he's going to evaluate another candle. And how long have we been waiting for all of these candles that Shane says he's going to be evaluating? Well, the good news there is, uh, and I've been saying this over the past couple of weeks, I am, since I'm doing this new show, Living Enthusiastically, um, this began and the whole idea became an idea because I'm restructuring not just my channel, but really my day-to-day -day life. My day-to-day -day life, restructuring it, reorganizing it, and uh, started with that, but then said, okay, well, now look at the whole week, now look at the whole month, now look at the whole season, now look at the whole year. Uh, I really, I, I was becoming very aware that I need to be pumping out more candle evaluation videos because it's just it's such a big part of what this channel has always been and yet my mind is drifting to newer and bigger things that doesn't mean I have to drop the ball on the candle things but I would like I said I was starting to feel sick and tired and worn out and stressed out anxiety and I said that is enough so the part of this 10 weeks uh, of becoming a healthier me is also a byproduct of me structuring how am I going to move forward if I want to grow and I want to put out other content that's not candle related or a different kind of candle related content I need to find a way where I can put out a steady amount of videos weekly and not go weeks without candle evaluations so everything is in the works everything is flowing everything is good do I wish it was happening a lot faster? Of course I do. Uh, but I feel like it's worth the time for me to restructure now. Um, so that by the time we get to the summer, things will hopefully be chugging along really nicely. Um, so take my word for it. A lot of effort on my part is going into trying to make and put out as much content as possible while pushing myself as much as I can while trying to enjoy the process as much as I can while trying to be healthy and happy because that's all important something that's been sitting on my shelf for a long time this was something that I wanted to evaluate I thought I would have evaluated this a long time ago um, this is a very uh, interesting candle. I, I, I'm, again, I'm not going to tell you too much. I'll give you uh, my initial opinions on some of these. But when I smelled this one and I found one, or a few, I should say, I wanted to review it. And I'm always looking for, you know, the candles that I can do on location. And imagine if I get into that location. If you can't tell, it's a soft image. Um... That's a, a beach scape with the setting sun, or it could be a, a raising sun, who knows. But the tide is in, and it's called a moonlight. Uh, moonlight. Oh, excuse me, I said the setting sun. What the, what am I talking about? That is uh, the moon uh, there on the horizon. And yeah, those moon rays are casting those beautiful uh, uh, shimmers, dazzles of little crystal lights off the surface of the water and we have a candle here that takes a lot of liberties and is more of an emotional uh is an emotional supplement to the image because this is not realistic this doesn't smell like being on the beach in front of the moon this is going to offer up an array of baking spices in a ratio that we don't normally see that some people probably won't I, I know some people won't like at all but for the people who like the people who are into the clothes and are into the spicier like spicier like like spicy cinnamon and and the nutmeg and the allspice that they're into the more of the aggressive baking spices will find this one really interesting and and the potpourri people too because there's a, a, a steeped, steep spice, steeped uh, potpourri. Uh, 
let's take on this candle and I think it's interesting. I think that's a really interesting take. Uh, it's not what I was expect. I wouldn't. It's not something I would expect with something like this because we could take something like this, moonlight, right? And this is an older candle. I'll talk about this in a second. But this is a midnight cove. Midnight cove. So we have moonlight and midnight cove. And what you can see here is another oceanscape. This is kind of like a harbor at night. A lighthouse right there. You can see this is an old label. This this is um, this is a a black band, non-black band. This is when they removed the black bands from the jar, uh, but the picture looked the same. So late 2006, 2007 candle here, uh, Midnight Cove, and so if we consider these two pictures, virtually kind of the same, but completely different take you know this is much closer this is much closer profile to midsummer uh i always say want to say midsummer night's dream um but midsummer night uh the classic the classic moon nighttime masculine cologne driven uh yankee candle that's been around for ages but they're there's something that's happening in these older Yankee candles that I just, I'm not finding on contemporary oceanic coastal candles. And that's going to be the extreme saltiness, salty minerality. Oh my God. Why? Why? Where have, where have, where have all the minerals gone? Where have, all, where has all the soil gone? Um, and why don't we see these in more candles these days? But this smells like if you look at it's hard to get a, a good a good a visual representation of this label. But we see you know these huge huge waves splashing against this cliff with this towering light lighthouse, and there's just a mist, a spray of the ocean everywhere. And you can imagine if you were anywhere near this location, this is taking a little bit more of a literal approach. Uh, you would have that that sea air, you know, you would feel that that freshness of that saline floating around you and uh, that is really it's amazing how you can capture that inside of a candle um, and um, so I thought that would be an interesting thing to show you. I'm going to take these on location with me uh, I'll save the location a secret for now, uh, but I'm going to take these on location and we're going to do these side by side. We have Moonlight and Midnight Cove. These are very, can be very hard to find. See, this is an outlet. Um, so really, if you want to get your hands on this, it's really an outlet thing. Uh, but if anyone's looking for any of these two, let me know. Reach out. You know how to email me. And... Um, I'll help you find those, but uh, give me a little bit of time because I'm going to re, re uh, evaluate them or talk about them. And I'm going to start bringing a little bit more of my own opinions into my evaluations. Um, yes, Nancy says a moonlight evaluation. Absolutely. And that's not the only the only candle that's going to be a part of that. There, there's, there's another candle. And if you watch my other lives, you probably know what it is. Um, but I'm going to start bringing a little bit more of my own opinions, not opinions, but sharing more of my emotional reactions, uh, and see how that flies, see how that works. I always try to, I always say paint the portrait. I always try to paint the portrait for people when I smell candles, uh, what I see in my head, what I feel, um, but you know, um, oh God, I think it was Chris and Chris left. He asked me kindly if I could review or make a video on season of peace. And I noticed, I think Nan, not Nancy, Nancy was talking about it with Rachel, but I think Rachel found season of peace in an outlet recently. And she, she just, she said something to the fact like, well, I, I, what does this smell like? I, I don't, I can't even tell. And then somebody provided the fragrance notes. Um, and remember, those fragrance notes were top, 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 
top secret for years, for years. It's only been about a year and a half since those have been public. And th that was a candle that I actually did do enough research and find the fragrance notes on that candle a long time ago. So to me, it was like a secret that I had. Now it's a secret everybody has. But if you read those fragrance notes, it's kind of like reading the instructions of a magic trick. And that got me thinking, like, do I want to explain the magic trick by sharing the fragrance notes and picking apart the fragrance, like what, what combination of things I smell? Or do I want to sit back and actually enjoy the illusion, the magic trick on stage? And again, that just, it got me thinking, I'm like, you know, maybe instead of picking apart a candle, I could spend a little bit more time talking about what the sum of the ingredients creates emotionally and um, how you guys, if you're interested in that candle, can utilize it to supplement times in your life, like, like season of peace, right? I think it's a great candle for the days leading up to Christmas. I think it's a great candle to have um, when um, um, you're spending time uh, like in a log cabin. Um, uh, I love that, you know, renting a cabin or staying in a lodge somewhere. Um, but the idea of just being snowed in, but you're with people that you enjoy and you're having the time of your life. Uh, that that emotion is far better in my heart and in my mind than just listing the ingredients that are in the candle. Long tangent there. Oh, and Eric says, um, I saw this right here. The boy has no smells. Candle has changed Shane. <laughs> Uh, yeah, guys, so after I've concluded last week's live, if you don't know, I, I burned a candle by a company named BoySmells.com. And I want to just be perfectly clear. I've heard a lot, a lot of feedback, a lot of folks saying how wonderful uh, this candle company's fragrances are. And I was even told uh, by uh, somebody, and I apologize if maybe that person's even here, uh, that that particular candle that I bought, Coin, which Amanda recommended, not recommended, but she was curious about it, like I was too, because uh, she informed me about that candle. I, I purchased it, I lit it, I kind of talked about how it was aromatically challenged on 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 the on the live, not because of the the, the throw, like the burn, like it, the, the fragrance wasn't spreading, but having the nose right up in the candle wasn't, it just wasn't, I, I, I felt like, I always said I was, gonna, I was gonna be honest if this ever happened. I would never make fun of a candle that I just don't like because of personal taste. But I, I always said to myself that I will po point out candles that I feel like are made I don't want to say irresponsibly, but are perhaps not um, responsibly made. Like that candle probably could have worked, and it could have just be a, it could be a dud. It could just be one candle that I bought, but I lit it, and then after the live was done, I let that thing keep going, and I yeah, I smelled a copper again. The candle is named Coin, so think of like you know, penny, right? Penny or coin, metallic smell. I did have a sensation of there's something metallic here, but it wasn't a smell, it was a sensation. And all I really could smell was a pretty, pretty, but very mild candle. And in fact, I could actually smell the soy wax. Soy wax has a very specific smell. It smells kind of like shea butter or cocoa butter, or something like that. It's that soothing, bathroom creamy lotion like smell and I was smelling more of the wax than I was actually the fragrance so um aromatically challenged and Angie's laughing at that yeah um I don't I, can't, I don't know how else to say it more PC uh than not not PC but to to be kind right 
this is no reason to cross boy smells off your list of people to look into. Uh, this was just a candle that just for me, unless someone else has got a different spin on it, different take, it just wasn't, it wasn't making the magic happen. It wasn't making the magic happen. And I do feel like it was just because maybe it was made and not completely thought out properly and released. I think they could have turned it into something pretty nice. Ah, Eric says, I bought one after the live. <laughs> I feel like there's an inside joke here. I bought one after the live last week and picked up a touch of white wine in it. Did you get that at all, Shane? Um, and Rebecca says, Eric, I'm shaking my head. That's not the first time he, uh, Eric's made a white wine reference. So I have a feeling you guys, and Nicole's laughing too now, that there's, there's, there's an inside joke that I'm not understanding. Or maybe there's an obvious joke that I'm not getting. Did I pick up white wine? In fact, in fact, yeah. Like a Loire Valley, uh, a Loire Valley north of Bordeaux white wine, limestone minerality, um, kind of a chalky, chalky, and at times even metallic note. So white wine, sure. More specifically, from I would say the eastern Loire Valley. Woo! What do I have in my hands right here? Um, uh, color me happy. Uh, I did review this candle, evaluate this candle, but it was from a scent plug, a scent plug, because that was the only time way back, but way back when, uh, the only way I could get my hands on the candle. Uh, this was like around Christmas time when I was buying these spring candles hunting them all down and I came across this that one day at the outlet and I'm like you know what? I don't know, like to pick it up so this way you could at least pick, like actually pick up the candle and talk about it for a second but upon sniffing it really really this you know I think my evaluation on the scent plug was for the most part right on I think maybe the only addition is well what I said that day was tropical fruits more specifically, the sweeter melons, right? So, uh, first and foremost, mango, but you could go into the cantaloupes, the honeydew melon, the melon rind, really, uh, really sweetened, uh, big, uh, like, like imagine just take that, like those melons, and throw in a super, 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 maybe even overripe peach. Squeeze that, get that sweet uh, stone fruit juice in there to sweeten things up. But... The only thing I would add is um, a confectionery candy shop, Spree Candy, Spree, remember Spree? Spree Sweet Tarts. Uh, there's a sour candy confection, um, which, if, if you don't know, is in the candy world, in the candy world, I guess that's a fair thing to say, candy world, is usually a combination of citric acid and malic acid uh, that makes candies tart. Um, and then the, the artificial flavorings. But, you know, it's like, this is like a handful of Runt's candy. You know, like, you go into, you know, Ames or Caldor or James Way. Uh, back in the day, you put the quarter in, and you get the handful of Runt's, the Runt bananas, because I'm smelling a little bit of that Runt banana in there, and the heart-shaped ones, which I think were, like, cherry, but really didn't taste like cherry at all. I, they were just, there's that distinct Starburst Runt's candy. Uh, fake artificial cherry smell. So this is really, really a really fun candle that if you are a sweet tooth, you enjoy those those sweet tart candies, you know, the gobstoppers, um, uh, the warheads, all of the, um, even the airheads taffy, a lot of those nostalgic candy. I don't know about contemporary candies now. I don't know what they taste like, but... Um, if you are into that, I don't know how the florals um, take a role. I really just don't, other than it, the florals contrast what this candle smells like. I don't have a problem with that. Smarties, yes, Smarties, because there's that, 
Again, there's that powdery confection, like when you smash up a Smarty or you smash up the inside of a, a Spree candy. There's that, that like Necco wafer powderiness, which Necco wafer is for sale. Necco wafer is for sale. If someone doesn't buy Necco wafer, Necco wafers are going to be gone forever. And I forget how long, but those candies have been around, I think, I think, for close to 100 years. Maybe over, maybe just under. But somebody... If you want to go in and buy Necco Wafer, let me know. I got I got a couple dollars saved up. Let's go buy Necco Wafer and save it. How could they do it with Necco Wafers? And how does a company like um, like M and M Mars Corporation? How do they just not say, okay, we'll we'll take Necco Wafer and we'll keep it on the shelves? Like, what do they have to lose? So uh, interesting candle. How, who's burned? color me happy this was a 2018 2018 uh horror queen laura does not like necco wafers i think that's why they're getting rid of it who has burned color me happy and how does it smell like how does it perform was it a big fruit punch uh experience in your living space was it a, a vague fruitiness did it become more authentic when it was burned or did it become more of a candy shop when you burn this candle. Uh, Eric says, when I worked at Caldor when I was in college, uh, one time I had to clean a huge excretion in the toy aisle after some kid dropped a bomb in that joint. Fun times. Eric, I think you should write some kind of manifesto or um, some kind of piece of literature. Maybe it should be a book on tape. Maybe it should be a book on uh, Blu-ray. Maybe it should be a YouTube channel. I think you have some very interesting stories behind you, a very interesting voice. So I hope you, hopefully you take that knowing that it's coming from a serious place uh, and I, I, I'm, uh, an honest place and that you, you consider it. I want to see more, more of you guys on YouTube creating channels. Uh, Eric also said, I'll uh, burn the Color Me Happy in a milk cup. And I got mostly mango. Yep. Yeah. Mango, mango flesh, like really sweet mango flesh. And um, I remember on the scent plug, I, I was thinking perhaps maybe a little bit of that very, you know, fragrant, even floral skin. I really don't know how else to uh, say it. The skin has the... Um, you get, if you eat the fruit too close to the skin or the skin itself, it has massively tannic, bitter skin, but it's got a, a very pungent flavor too. And I don't necessarily smell that, but I do get like a little bit of those, a little bit of florals. So to kind of contradict myself, the florals uh, uh, on this picture, I'm getting a little bit of like that green stem, that green stem floral greenhouse thing uh, but it's going to be very very mild because it's dominated by the big fruit so maybe mango skin maybe that's what they're going for what else do I have in this bag I have some other I just, have, I just went down this morning to my office and I loaded this bag up and I came to shoot the live today I, I and I, 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 these were random, but they're actually starting to make kind of sense. Um, so here's an example. I showed you two, uh, we can call them aquatic, but let's call them beach scape candles, just to be uh, clear uh, or more specific, beach scape candles. Two older ones, two completely different approaches. And right here I have two contemporary uh, fragrances. This was going to be last summer's or spring. Yeah, last summer UK collection fragrances. Uh, very small, I know, 
um, but so 2017 UK European Sea Air and Coastal Living and uh, again two beach scape candles so let's see if I get that saltiness here no see I think what's replaced the saltiness right off the bat bam this is like the Cape Cod candle uh, from the National Parks collection. It's like, um, it's like uh, Mediterranean breeze. It's like, um, I really like the, the, uh, the, so this, these candles I'm, I enjoy. I want you to know that. This is beach flowers. Um, what's the one I just did? Um, and wh what I'm trying to say is the, the saltiness is kind of being replaced by these floral notes, the jasmines and the jasmines, the lavenders, the lilacs, the softer blossoms, the sweeter blossoms. And I'm getting little, if any, of that saltiness. And this is called sea air, sea air. It's a very nice smell, it's a nice candle, but Obviously, there is a shift in uh, the language of Yankee Candle. You know, when they're talking about beachscape years ago, their language of how they can concoct that smell was different than what it is today. Today, it is primarily uh, a floral with citrus accent uh, to express the idea of fresh air, clean air, coastal living. Let's get a little picture there. This one's a little different. There's a little fruitiness and some eucalyptus here and something pretty sweet. I, okay, maybe there, there might be a little bit of a saltiness here, but smelling this candle, I wouldn't, I would say this is more of a sea air. There's that sweeter citrus, uh, dried florals that we'll find in, um, well, in many things, wherever you find dried floral. It has a bathroom. That's a good way of saying, like, I don't want to say bathroom. Bathroom just sounds so, like, but, like, um... Ba I always say bath and body, like a bath and body product smell. Oh, and what is that flower? It's a very specific flower. Oh, I almost like want to say like daffodil, but I can't. This is nice. I like this one more than sea air, if you want my personal opinion. Uh, but if you are into more powerful, uh, f uh, excuse me, floral, driven sea fragrances. You just, you can't get enough of those beach flowers. And you want something to really, really uh, brighten the room with uh, bouquets of uh, petals and blossoms. That's the one, that's the place to go. Or if you want something a little bit more safe and sweet, still complex, still very dynamic, uh, but a little bit more liberties taken here. You know, this, um, could be coastal living. It could be, you know, if this was called like, um, you know, spring at the farm, right? I guess that kind of would work too. Maybe I'd not at the farm. It's a bad one. Not like cattle farm. Maybe like some other crops. Um, cotton candy. Let's just talk about a second about how cotton candy has become a huge sensation. The new sensation. New sensation. Um, what is happening? Um, I found, I find that from outlet to outlet that I go to, uh, can, uh cotton candy, I keep hearing these stories about cotton candy being bought out, purchased out. Does somebody know something that I don't know about cotton candy? Cotton candy is not in a regular production. It's not like steadily in production. 
but it's never really been that one that was hard to find. A lot of people enjoy it. Also find that it's one that, you know, is is not is not something you probably want to hold on to forever. It's kind of, you know, it's like um, it's like a, a, a young wine that's meant to drink in its youth, not to age. Because just smelling this, I mean, this is not even old. This is, well, it is old, actually. Whoa, 2015. Um, older. Um, I'm smelling more of the paraffin wax. It's not, it's not even lit. And this is not, this is not an outlet candle. But um, it does have that distinct cotton candy, spun sugar, uh, smell, which sponge sugar, I, I mean, that smell is really caramelization. It's, it's, it's sugar. It's sugar that's being melted and cooled, right? So what you're doing is it's, you're, you're not getting a dark caramel, but you're still caramelizing the sugar. It's an enzymatic browning of that sugar, which changes the flavor and aromatic profile. And of course they flavor the cotton candy as well. But I need to I need to address this candle because since it's a, a trending thing, and now that we have summer coming up with you know all of these carnivals and bazaars in my hometown we called it the town bazaar. Does anyone's hometown call it a bazaar? All the carnival rides come in, the the the. the the, the games, the toys, the rides, the foods, uh, and my favorite part of that experience was always the cotton candy. Another video. This should this title of this this live should be videos I haven't made that I said I was going to. It's funny because the outlet seems to have an endless supply of wax tarts. Well, that's good, Travis. Maybe you might want to make a little investment there if you like the fragrance. Get them before someone buys them out. We have a rodeo here in Houston. Rodeo. I want to like dress like Pee Wee Herman from uh, not not in his his getup, but like from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Remember when he was at the rodeo and he had like the big hat. And he had like the big, what do you call those, the chaps. I always laughed so hard. I still laugh at that scene when he's dressed like that. Paul Rubens, just amazingly funny, funny, uh, 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 talented actor, if you ask me, or, or comedian. I tried the Dunkin' Donuts cotton candy drink and it was terrible. He says Nicole. Uh, Eric says he has multiples of the cotton candy. Yeah, cotton candy beverage in beverage form? I don't know. I mean, when I was a kid, definitely. I don't know if I'd want to go for that now. Tulip Festival, says Hobble Kitty. That sounds so awesome. We have our, or we have our, our. I love that. So it must be a nice community thing. We have our Tulip Festival coming next weekend. We'll enjoy that. Take pictures and post them on the Facebook fan page. Now I want to watch Pure Country. And Angie wants to dress up as the Three Amigos. I'll be, I'll be Chevy Chase. Pee Wee is hilarious. Blue Shadows. On the Range is my favorite country song. Awesome, awesome. Have you tried Sea Salt and Sage? That was one I did not try, Amanda. Dang, you know, you always you always catch me. I've tried everything. That's like the one I could not, not that I couldn't get, but I didn't get. Um, and yeah, a lot of people really liked it. It was the same collection as the Olive and Time and Riviera Escape. And you know how much I love Riviera Escape and the Olive and Thyme, and I feel like Sea Salt and Sage is like, that completes that trio so nicely. And I feel like you could burn them all together and you would have this orchestrated Yankee Candle 
symphony. Um, and somebody should do that. Somebody should film it. Somebody should post it. But if I had all three of those, I would have to leave them unburned because I, lo I think that's a perfect little trio. Laura has to leave. Laura, uh, keep your eye on uh, your mailbox. Not your email mailbox, but your mailbox mailbox. I apologize for the delay, but we have some goodies coming your way. I want to try Bath and Body Works Aloe and Sage. Aloe and Sage, that sounds... Aloe. Is that the one I reviewed? Aloe and Sage? Nancy? Aloe and Sage. I don't own it anymore. Um, and I never burned it. Aloe and Sage. Yeah, I believe that was a really good one. It was aloe and a certain kind of sage, wasn't it? Or, or in the description, the fragrance, though, it was described as a desert sage. And, yeah, it, I, I, I really like that. That was that, I did that evaluation January of 2017. So that was a long time ago. Hit refresh collection. You know, there's something I was talking to my brother about about that hit ref uh, refresh collection videos. There were two videos. And since we're coming clean, since I'm sharing more personal experiences with you guys, um, I filmed those two videos. Hit, I, I covered, I think, nine of the hit reflect, nine of the 10 hit refresh collection candles in a really nice room that I had at the Fort William Henry Conference Center at, in Lake George, overlooking, top floor, overlooking the entire Lake George, well, looking over the lake, but also like Main Street. It was the most beautiful view in a hotel room. One of the most I've ever had. And one day was like super sunny and clear, and the other day was like really like snowy. So like I really got like a, a good mixer, but anyway, and it was also the same same trip where I did the Fort William Henry Ghost Tour. But I filmed in those in those rooms that the two part one and part two of the Hit Refresh collection. And if you watch those videos very carefully, you'll notice if you look really deep into my face that I am a little bit rosy, and I am a little bit I, I got a little bit of the sweat coming down. Now I sweat easily, but I, I have I'm looking pretty shiny. My eyes are a little bit crazy here. I, I, I'm, I'm still amazed at how dark my eyes are right now because they've been so clear the past few days. But uh, I, had, I had a little bit of this action going on. I had, uh, prior to filming those candle reviews, had a little bit of an anxiety attack. And when I say a little bit, I mean, it was an anxiety attack. Um, it wasn't a panic attack. Uh, that's a whole different story. Um, I, uh, but... I, that was at a time where I was really pushing myself too hard. I was expecting too much out of myself. And uh, that trip, I was trying to get so much done. I did, I did several videos on that trip and I kind of realized, like, wow, it's getting late in the day and I need to review nine candles, which was the biggest candle evaluation session I had ever done up to that point. And I did it all in one in, in one session, but the weight of setting up the lights, making sure everything looked good, and then making sure that, you know, I was energized and had enough coffee in me to, to perform, uh, I really worked myself up. And it's just, it's amazing if you go back and watch that video that you can see the kind of the little bit of the pain and the uh the 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 i don't want to sound dramatic but the the the, the little bit of the trauma that i was going through in the, the earlier moments um of that just to put it out there we're all human right and that was one of those days where i really was just red in the face and um i never my i kind of my 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 i was talking to my brother on the phone and my voice just kind of seized up and my focus just suddenly hot, hot flash. 
I'm like, uh oh, something's going on, not feeling good. Panic starts to set in, trying to calm yourself down, but there's coffee in your system, and you're like, oh god, oh god, oh god. So, um, I'm well past that now. A long time ago, it's not, a, it's not, it never was a sensitive topic. But if you want to get like, just see something interesting, interesting, go back to those videos, and just take a quick look at my face, and you'll see quite easily that you, uh, that I was going through something. I was a mess. And in retrospect, I wish I had filmed that experience I was going through because that would be a personal experience that I would be more than uh, willing to share at this stage of the game. Um, you know, share share some of the you know uh, of those personal moments with you folks. You guys have all become such close friends. And Cookie Hill says, "Oh, I can relate with Shane. I didn't even know you were here, Cookie." Did I miss you before? Oh no, here you go. You say like Aloe and Sage. Uh, Cookie Hills in the house. Yeah, uh, it was, um, anxiety runs in the family. A lot of people have anxiety. I'm gonna stop talking about anxiety, but, um, but um, I did wanna put that out there because I, I was almost getting to the point where I forgot about it. Amanda says, how would you feel about getting sea salt and sage as a tart along with wild seagrass and beach holiday tarts? I could also throw in a moonlight tart for reference to your... Uh, your question, are you thinking about going and purchasing them? Uh, I'm trying to recall the candles in my head. Sea salt and sage, I know. Wild seagrass, I know. It's been a while, not a while, but the memory is fading. And beach holiday, beach holiday. Which one is that, beach holiday? Um, if you're thinking about purchasing, absolutely go for it. Oh, I see what you, or maybe you're suggesting I buy them for the evaluation sorry Amanda I um, I couldn't I couldn't I, 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 I'm, I'm not in touch with what you're asking sounds like a good question though uh, Angie says it's a shame that you're getting stressed out about this channel it should be fun it is absolutely fun it's it, the 99% of it is fun um any of the problems qualms that i had with the show have become rewarding because now i get to do like things like in-betweens so if something ridiculous happens if something very you know uh all the misfortunes of being on the road and traveling and making videos, video production, all of those things I get to share and it just becomes entertainment now. So it's not, it's not, it's not, a, more of the stress comes out, more of the stress is, um, um, wishing that not, and I, I, wishing will just, not, will just won't get you anywhere. You have to do. You have to do and perform, and that's what I'm working towards. Uh, the stress comes from I want to be doing more, and I want to be fulfilling all of these, these things that I say that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I want to be in the moment. I want to be one step ahead, but I also need to be planning for the future. Like I'm already working on the big season, uh, September, October, November, December. Those, that's the big season. That's why I really want this channel to shine. Um, um, meanwhile, thinking about summer content, something I really didn't get a chance to do last year because before I... I got into the summer, we were already talking about Halloween, which is something I'm not going to allow to happen this year. Um, so the stress is really more of me getting things done. Um, it has nothing to do with the actual production of it or the content that I'm producing. So trust me when I say uh, all you have to do is have patience. All you have to do is have patience with me. 
and trust me when I'm saying making the steps necessary for myself, for the channel, to make things function a little bit easier and better. Nancy says, I, almost remember, uh, I remember almost having a little panic attack on Christmas Eve one year because I had too much to do. Let's just say the tree didn't get decorated that year. Yeah, so that's, I think what Nancy is describing is very, the reason why I said, I said anxiety attack. You know, panic attack will save for another day. But it's one of those things where you feel up here, you're up here and... Um, you have all these tax tasks that you need to accomplish, but looking at it from a broad view, instead of up close, like one task at a time, if you look at the broad view, it can be very overwhelming and the body sometimes doesn't like to have that much of a shock. Oh, Amanda says, I already have them. And I can send them to you. Wild Seagrass and Beach Holiday were UK exclusives. Uh, Amanda, uh, you know, you know the. Hopefully, you know the policy. It's like if you, if anybody anywhere in the world sends me something, I will open it. I will address it. And Nicole, if you're still here, I think I have Bryce's letter. But I, I give me a moment for that. I'm. Um, I think I might. I'm not going to show the contents of the letter. But uh, if you don't know, Nicole, Nicole, Nicole's little boy, uh, Bryce, I think he sent me a letter. I still have it sealed, but I want to open it on camera. I'm not going to share the contents of the letter, but I, it's going to be featured in my video. Uh, so that's the only reason why I haven't confirmed that I received it, or I should have confirmed that I received it, but I haven't said thank you to you or Bryce yet. Because uh, I, I just need to film that little sequence. And Nicole says, I can share. Okay, well, that makes it uh, a lot easier. But I had a really good idea of how that could that letter could help me illustrate a point that I wanted to make. So, Amanda, if, you, if anybody wants to send me something, I will share it on a live. I will share it in a, a main video on the main channel. I will. At this point, at this juncture, I have more than enough time to share anything that you send me. The number one rule is, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I don't want people spending money too much money especially if it's like a gift like i a gift to me is a silly drawing and a handwritten letter hello uh, but if it's costing a lot of money if it's a lot of money in your pocket i just caution you just be very careful because that's just something i don't want i, I just don't think that's a great resource of your money i'm always happy always happy to receive anything from you guys so to answer your question, Amanda, if you would like to send them, I do know that sending things internationally can be very expensive. So that is completely, completely up to you. You have my word that I will, I will share them, I will talk about them, and I could always incorporate them because I still, I do have these two uh, UK cents. Um. Yeah, I mean. Um, I haven't really said a lot about but the P.O. Box recently because um, I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want people to think that I'm asking for, like, like, send me, send me goodies, send me gifts. But at the same time, it's, it's, not, it's not about that. It's about sharing and having fun and, and the, the surprise and the fun of opening up a box on a live show and not knowing what's inside. Uh, so as long as it's, if you want to send me anything, it doesn't have to be candle related, anything, um, um, uh, just, uh, my PO box is in all of my videos. Just make sure you're not spending a lot of money. If you want to spend a little bit of money for the show, do that in the form of a contribution or a pledge, because this way it'll translate into the production of the show. I can put that money towards like going to Santa's village this year. You know what I mean? And Jasmine, well done with the diet change. Yes. I'm usually really humble, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited that uh, what I'm doing, I'm so, it's such an early part of the process. Um, but I think the small little reward that has come so far so soon 
has already made the daunting task ahead of me a little bit easier. Um, I'm very excited to be working on the second part of Living Enthusiastically. Uh, in a perfect world, it would have been posted yesterday, but the simple truth is something still need to be filmed. So obviously editing is not done yet. So it looks like the episode two and three will be posted somewhat closer together. I'll send Shane a candle lamp. <laughs> Jasmine says, yeah, I felt the same way when I upped the fruits and veggies. Yeah, right? It's funny, you know, like sometimes limiting what you can eat makes eating so much more, it seems like there's so many more options when you limit the food that you can eat. I know that sounds weird, but that has always been the experience with me, right? Because when there's no like restrictions on your diet or you're not trying to do anything specifically, you're like, hmm, what to do for dinner? Hmm, what to do for lunch? Um, but when you know that like, okay, well, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from this, I'm trying to not do that, and I'm trying to do a lot of this, get a lot of that in my body. Suddenly you go and you look at uh, farm stands, uh, the grocery store, or the markets, you look at things differently. You, you know, you start picking up veggies and you, you look at them and you're like, wow, look at this one, this one. And you smell them. You're having more of an experience. You know, you're, it's, it's a more of a kind of, um, you're having an experience, a closer uh, experience with choosing the food that you're going to be uh, putting in your body. Especially when you spend a lot of time preparing and cooking instead of going out to dinner or getting a going out for a quick bite for lunch or something like that. When you spend more time pre-planning, um, I always find that it feels like it's the, the, the options are limitless when, uh, when I'm on a specific kind of diet. Can you still drink wine on your diet? There's, I'm not doing any specific diet. Um, what, what, I'll, I'll explain so I'll make something clear about alcoholic beverages for me uh, if anyone doesn't know at this point anyone who doesn't know I'll just say it uh, sommelier sommelier certified sommelier that's that's a, a, a title that uh, I obtained from the guild of master sommeliers look it up um, and so I did work in the beverage industry f for quite some time uh, which means, yes, I'm very familiar with alcoholic beverage, and I'm very familiar with drinking alcoholic beverages. But when I moved from Napa Valley, something happened. Um, I moved from Napa Valley, and suddenly alcoholic beverages weren't free anymore. Because <laughs> when you're living in Napa Valley, all this wine's at your disposal. You're making it. Your friends are making it. Your, 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 your employer is making it. You're trading wines. You're going to restaurants where your friends are working. Uh, roommates are, my roommates were really high, high, highly talented professional mixologists. Alcohol is just a part of your day-to-day -day life in Napa Valley. But moving back to the East Coast, it was such like a shock, like, whoa, like, why are, why is everyone going out for coffee when it's time to go out for drinks? And then I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, it's 3 p.m., it's not time for drinks yet. Could be, could be, no judging on my part. Uh, but um, during that transition, I stopped drinking a lot of alcoholic beverages and I started to enjoy not having a lot of alcohol um, in my weekly schedule. It just, it just feels better for me. Some people can snap back like that. I just, you know, it's like even just a beer will make me feel sluggish. It'll, it'll convince me to not do something that I probably should do. And of course, the, the whole driving situation becomes a problem, especially, in the, you know, like, I'm almost always in the country environment. So I just naturally haven't been drinking uh, a lot of alcoholic beverages. Do I, um, have I stopped completely? No, but like the cocktail hours doesn't happen to me as much. Um, some, I'll get like, still gifts from, friends from California and 
I'll open things up if people come over, things that I have in my own collection. Uh, but during this diet, I think for the 10 weeks, I am going to stay away from wine. But that is not something that I'm recommending anyone does if they're going on a health thing. I think there's a lot of benefit. There's, there's, there is. There's a lot of benefits to drinking wine. It's just, it's, it's the same thing with the coffee. I don't have to stop drinking the coffee. But, but since I decided to give it 110% for the 10 weeks, I'm going to stay away from alcohol and coffee. Mm -mm. Limit my coffee. Whoa, I've got to be careful what I'm saying here. We're crazy about beer in Colorado. Yes, uh, man, I, I've been postponing a trip to Colorado for the longest time. Um, you know, I kind of did my Portland, Portland and greater Portland area, Willamette Valley, wine and beer excursions. And I always wanted to do kind of the same thing for Colorado. Colorado makes some pretty amazing wines too, if you guys can believe that, at uh, lower elevations. Um, but beer specifically is the reason why I wanted to go. So one of these days, I gotta get out to Colorado, just because I, 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 I've never been to the state. And I think I'd love Colorado. And so many things to do. And believe, believe you me, if I make it to Colorado, I will be tasting lots of, lots of delicious beers, I hope. Um, check this out. Black Band. What is this candle? Just by the, looking at the profile, can someone tell me what this candle is? Come on. You guys know what that is. What is that candle? Not, you can kind of see the beginning of the first word there. Someone tell me what that candle is. Balsam and cedar. What if I told you it wasn't? Uh, something that has been on my mind for a long time, something I wanted to address, because you may know, or you may have known, but forgotten, and maybe you're completely unaware. Uh, balsam and cedar is the most successful candle in the world. There's not one candle in the world of any one type that has sold more in quantity and probably has, has been introduced to so many people worldwide. I am completely open for someone saying, no, Shane, you're wrong about that, but it's Yankee Candle's most popular scent, uh, by far selling the most. And it, um, Yankee Candle is just without question, um, has such a, a, everybody knows Yankee Candle. Wasn't there a pine cone in line? There was a pine cone in line. Very good. Uh, that was a very, I, I love, like that one a lot because I always like citrus and, 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 and pine, uh, or coniferous, coniferous trees. Um, but, so balsam and cedar, plain and simple, it's pro to, to, to be very just blunt about it, it's like the most successful candle, scented candle of all time. And I just, I don't, I would love to see someone kind of like have a discussion with someone who wants to say otherwise. But my point is, this isn't balsam and cedar because there was a precursor. There was a precursor to balsam and cedar. Balsam and cedar was not released. I mean, most like really popular Yankee candles came out in the early days, early '80s. Mistletoe is another big one, but you can see balsam is on balsam. It says balsam right there, right? Um, um, but I think balsam and cedar was released in 1997, I think, give or take a few years. It actually could be, a, a, yeah, it could be a couple of years after that. It's just surprising. You think that it's would be as old as time, right? Just like spiced pumpkin and 
um, 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 uh, Midsummer Night and, and um, Fresh Cut Roses, you know, like the classic Yankee Candles, Blueberry. Uh, but before there was balsam and cedar, there was something that, well, balsam and cedar replaced this candle. Does anybody know what it is? Christmas wreath. That's another good grass. Oh, 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 Hobble Kitty's got it. Hobble Kitty has it. A balsam fir. Yes, balsam fir. I know that's hard to see, folks. I apologize. I'm trying to do my best here. And this is just a little guy um, because I I bought this little one without investing in a big one because, you, as you can imagine, they can get pricey. But, oh, my good Lord. This is an amazing candle, and it's not balsam and cedar. It's not. This is a far more, I mean, balsam resin, right? But this is by far, to me, a much more resinous candle. A big, big jump backwards from cedar. cedar you still have the, the cedar notes in here. You're always going to have the, probably the cedar notes. But this smells like... Christmas to such a big degree. There's a lot of candles that are similar, but um, this is one I, I just thinking to myself, like when I got this in, it was, I'm, I'm so happy I bought it. I'm thinking like, wow, this should be a part of the lineup. This should not be gone. Balsam and fur, uh, the classic, I say it all the time, I say it all the time, the frankincense, the myrrh, the three wise men, the, the, the incense that we smell around Christmas time, whether that be uh, in uh, uh, churches or um, other places of, of uh, other faiths uh, that burn frankincense and myrrh. I really am not familiar uh, if, if, if it's really just a Christian thing or, or if it, it, it goes beyond that. But, you know, of course, there's such... There's, such a history, thousands and thousands of history, years of history of myrrh and frankincense being used um, for medicinal purposes, for hygiene purposes, for, 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 for many things. So uh, I think everyone has an association with it, but this is a, a really, really beautiful candle. So makes me want to venture to guess, would this ever be a returning favorite? And I don't think they would. Uh, and the only and the sad thing is is because it's so similar to balsam and cedar um, visually it, it's almost it's almost exactly the same but I do want to get a larger candle of this and if you do or you are a fan of the frankincense myrrh incense Christian Cathedral st. Patrick's Cathedral Christmas time in Manhattan um, that wonderful billowing clouds of resinous smoke without being too smoky. It's really the resin, it's not the smoke. Uh, with that strong pine uh, coniferous tree background, the more of the, the sweeter pine, the pine needles, the pine cones, the sap. Um, this is a candle that you might, might want to uh, dig up on say eBay, something like that. It could be quite expensive, but I am, I'm, I'm, I'm getting prepared for Christmas too. And um, that is one for sure I will be discussing come this holiday season. But I do need to get a larger jar of it. It is really not like mistletoe at all. It is... I'm trying to think of one that... What's a good Yankee candle that has the frankincense and myrrh? Even the frankincense candle doesn't have that that Christmas frankincense myrrh aroma. The I wonder what the top selling Yankee candles are besides balsam and cedar. The top selling candles are going to be the 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 classic. So spiced pumpkin, uh, harvest. Those two have always been a staple. They have never gone away. Of course. Um, you know candles like witches brew they trend it seems like some years 
they sell out instantly in some years like nobody wants anything to do with which is brew it's just mainly the the the, the consensus up on each and every year of how people feel about patchouli um uh for christmas uh, it's balsam and cedar easily uh but uh, uh um, home for the holidays was always uh the biggie home for the holidays has been around for ages christmas eve has been around for ages and um and then the very early ones are more of the simplistic ones uh, not simplistic but like single name candles like blueberry uh spiced apple was the f one of the first like the original candle spiced apple in the 70s and it amazes me that that candle never makes a comeback they don't bring that back because it was such a large part of yankee candles history for almost two decades um uh, Stormwatch, believe it or not, has been around since the, uh, the early 80s. Uh, Honeydew Melon has been around since the early 80s. Um, that one's actually, I don't even know when the last time they, they had that in a regular production. Um, Fresh Cut Roses, uh, Cliff Walk, uh, and what's the other one? Uh, sea, sea Mist Rose? Sea Mist Rose is another rose candle that was really popular in the 80s and I think was introduced in the 70s. Christmas Cookie is a very, very popular one, but it is one that was brought on later in the 90s, kind of like Balsam and Cedar. Apple Pumpkin. Apple Pumpkin's amazing. I don't know when Apple Pumpkin made its Holiday Bayberry, that one's been around a while. That one's been around a while. Pink Sands, yeah, Pink Sands is definitely, uh, thank you for bringing that one up. That's definitely one of them, Rachel. That's one that's, like, that That would fit into a category of Yankee Candle classics. Like, if you had to think of, like, the heavyweights of Yankee Candles, Pink Sands, even Golden Sands at this point. Midsummer Night's Dream, or <laughs> Midsummer Night, um... And um, some of them would shock you how old they are. Like, I bet you, you guys probably wouldn't think, like, French vanilla would be old. But that was introduced in, like, 1974. 1974. Um, uh, Macintosh, and see, there's a good example. Like, Macintosh, you think, would be, I mean, that is certainly a heavyweight, too. That is one of their best-selling candles, uh, but it's not as old as we think it would be because I think that came around late 80s early 90s I Wish I had all the dates stuck in my head clean cotton is old midnight jasmine pink sand soft blanket uh, All of those. Thank you Amanda for that. So maybe we should do that. Maybe uh, I should go on um, Maybe when I'm at the village go on a little bit of a voyage. Just people who work at the Yankee Candle Village who've been there for 20 plus years. Some of them closer to 30 years. Um, and thankfully, they are the incredibly nicest people. Um, Dana, huge shout out to Dana. Dana is responsible for all of the displays, of actually executing the displays, designing the displays. She was um, mentored by Mike Kittredge Sr., or the second, or the creator of Yankee Candle. She was uh, really under his wing and was trained uh, back in the golden days. Uh, I don't know if you want to call them golden days, but the early days of South Deerfield. Uh, and she's still doing it. She's responsible for the, the, the Bavarian Village and Nutcracker Castle, all of that stuff. You know, you know I've had conversations to her with her uh, about like, where the inspiration came from, what Mike Kittrich is, you know, uh, what he wanted, what he wanted to see. And I told her, I'm like, someone should write, you should write a book. I told her she should write a book because she just has this uh, wealth of knowledge of the village, but also the history of Yankee Candle. So maybe I'll go, I'll talk to people like Dana and ask uh, if he, you know, had to create a list of like the top five, top 10 
most successful or most unique or the candles that have had, even if they're not made anymore, the candles that have had the most impact uh, for Yankee Candle over the course of, um, I mean, we're getting close to three and a half generations now. Wait a minute. God, four generations. Four plus. I can't do math if you guys are, uh, if you guys are wondering. Does anyone remember the 90s? It seemed, I remember the 90s. Uh, does anyone remember, oh, in the 90s, I apologize, Rachel. My speech that made a mistake. In the 90s, it seemed like everyone had a mulberry candle. I didn't have a mulberry candle. Sage and citrus. Ah, oh. sage and citrus has been around forever as well. Thank you for bringing that up, Marshmallow. Marshmallow, is it Lori, Laura, Laura? I'm sorry that I feel so embarrassed that I don't have names down pat. It's maybe it's not even Laura. Uh, um, I want to get on the first name basis with a lot of you folks. Um, but yeah, there was a, a brand new country kitchen pre-1985 sage and citrus candle. I posted a picture of it on my Instagram. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, nice, nice catch. Like, nice, nice find. It's part of your collection now. Mm, I missed it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was hoping I was going to get it. It was unlit. It was so beautiful. I think that's what pushed me to buy the baby powder. Um, I got the equivalent, same age, um, almost unlit. It was lit probably for like, looks like for like 15 minutes, a baby powder from the same time period. Um, but yes, yeah, age and citrus has been around for a long time. Lori, Laura. I get both names. Okay. I think that's why I was having trouble. Mulberry candle. Hmm. What else do I have here? We went over cotton candy. We went over coastal living and sea air, enchanted garden. I'm getting some pencil shavings. Remember, uh, you know, when the kids used to get in elementary school, get the little plastic pencil shave. Not the not the one where you would say, "Excuse me, uh, I have to get up from my uh, desk and go sharpen my pencil." But the little pocket things, right? If you're if you're an illustrator or you still you spend a lot of time with the pencil in your hand, you probably have a good one. I I use my pocket pencil sharpener all the time. Um, but when you would get those really nice spiraling, sh those spiral shavings of, uh, those wooden number two, uh, Ticonderoga number two B pencils, right in there, right in there. They're probably going to describe that as sandalwood. That is usually a sandalwood aroma. But I get some pencil saving shavings in there, and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. It's actually a really nice, nice accent. How are we doing on time? We're at about an hour and a half. I wasn't even thinking that we were going to be doing an hour today. Dixon to Kinderoga number two. Yes. Yes. I know, I know my pencils. Oh, 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 let me be more clear. I thought pencil shavings were cedar. I'm not commenting on the material of the pencil. I'm talking about the note. Whenever I smell uh, pencil shavings, in the fragrance world, that the pencil shavings, that's what comes to my mind, but that's not what it actually is, right? When I smell pencil shavings, it's usually sandalwood in the fragrance, construction, the recipe. It's kind of like, I get pencil shavings, I say pencil shavings on wine too. 
from drinking a young Chardonnay from Napa Valley, one that's heavily oaked with American uh, oak. And you smell it, I'll say pencil shavings. I won't, would never say that to a customer, but if I was speaking to like friends or you know people who work in the industry, like I'm getting a little bit of that pencil shaving action. And if, they work, if you work in the industry, you know what I would be talking about because it's used a lot of times as a descriptor. But that smell signifies that it's American oak versus French oak. At least that should be what it signifies, uh, or at least that's one of the little tricks. Because American oak is a much tighter grained wood uh, and it, it imparts more of that raw lumber like flavor into the wine. So I'm taking a little tangent, but I'm just kind of, I should have made myself a little bit more clear. I'm not saying there's um, pencil, uh, the pencils are made of sandalwood. Yeah, so if you smell like, if you smell a Chardonnay, young Chardonnay, and you smell it and you're like, mm, uh, this smells like a little bit like Home Depot. It smells a little bit like sawdust. It smells a little bit like pencil shavings. Um, good chance it's American oak. This is a little trick. If you smell a Chardonnay from Napa Valley, it could be from the same region, but most Napa Valley producers use French oak, believe it or not. Um, and if you smell a Chardonnay and it's like, wait a minute, this smells a little bit more like um, um, a little bit of like baking spices, like freshly grated Saigon cinnamon, or this smells a little bit more of like a treated wood. Uh, this smells a little bit more spicy and a little bit more sweet. And the smell is much more subdued. Um, uh, I actually got it wrong. I said American oak was much tighter grain. French oak is much tighter grain, much tighter grain. I can't believe I said that, I apologize. So the, the, the thing is with French oak, it doesn't impart the as much flavor as American oak. Um, so um, just a little tip if you're doing wine tasting. If you just taste a little bit of the oak and it's more of like a treated wood, uh, it doesn't smell like fresh lumber, like timber. It smells like treated wood or has a little bit more of that vanilla, creamy, baking spice, cinnamon, nutmeg, the barrel spice, because they they caramelize. Um, they don't care. It's not actually caramelization. Dang it. It's, uh, it's a Mylard reaction. But they burn the inside of the barrel. So the resins are kind of like caramelizing, right? They're, the resins in the wood are caramelizing, producing sweeter flavors. That's why we get those very interesting baking spice flavors in wines. Or if you get like a burnt or a very dark, like an espresso flavor in a wine, like a Syrah, it's because they heavily toast. They burn the inside of the barrels. They literally burn, set them ablaze. Wow. This turned into a wine show for a long time there. I apologize. I miss talking about wine. telling you the, 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 the thing I miss most about wine and beverage in general Scott says um, he likes a nice bourbon whiskey based spirits gins spirits in general brews of all kinds ales uh, even non-alcoholic beverages the thing that I miss most about beverages is smelling them it's not even drinking them is that crazy I miss the process of having, you know, 10 glasses of different tequilas in front of me, 10 glasses of different wines in front of me, red wines, white wines, whatever it may be, different beers, and systematically smelling them side by side and breaking them apart and analyzing them and using, again, creating your own vocabulary to communicate what that beverage smells like and the experience of sniffing it, tasting it, and... Um, and, and again, sharing it. I would love to do a wine channel. Um, no one asked, a lot, some of you guys asked from time to time, like why don't we do like a, a wine show? I would love to do it. It just would cost an enormous amount of cash because we could sit and talk about uh, introductory, not even introductory level wines, but uh, bargain wines for days and days and days. But your guys are never really gonna learn anything. If you really wanna learn about wine, you need to be drinking wines that are representative of what they are. Representative of where they came from, what grape they were made of, and 
the process that the the beverage was made. Um, I remember once being scalded by a master, a master sommelier. Keep in mind, folks, there's only a few hundred of these people in the world. Um, um, Jason Heller. I wasn't going to say his name, but I don't think he'd mind me sharing the story. I was at uh, kind of a round table tasting with Jason Heller. Young guy. He's master small A. He's one of the youngest guys who ever accomplished that feat. And we're doing a blind. Everyone brings a blind. And you put it in the bag. And then uh, you systematically go over one wine at a time. And as a round to us, the wine, before you know what it is, bring it to my friend. Uh, she needed to bring a Sangiovese, uh, a good representation, um, a, 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 a Sangiovese from the Chianti region, a Chianti Classico. I was like, why don't you just get this wine? It's not that expensive. She, was, she didn't have a lot of money to spend. I'm like, why don't you just get this one? I've had before, it's it's drinkable. She brought it, and um, as soon as the master small guy, Jason, as soon as Jason tasted, and, or, forget, he didn't even taste it. As he smelled this wine, he put the glass down, he's like, look, he addressed everybody in the group. It's like, you know, it's like, it's a, it's very important if you're going to be having group tastings, professional group tastings like this, that you, whoever brought this San Juvesi, understand that you cannot bring a wine that is not not representative of what it is to a tasting group because you're really going to start making enemies fast and it was like hearing this coming from master small I'm like oh my god i'm like thank god i brought a better wine that was um w went over well there was nothing wrong with the wine but you have to when you're studying wine you have to get wine that's not like a left field, random, unique thing. It's got to be, it's got to represent what that wine is from the region, from the maker, from the grape, from a, a type of climate, whatever it might be. This has really become a wine show. And with that, I think it's time to sum things up for the day. As always, folks, it's always a pleasure. It's always fun. It's always a highlight of my week to come uh, speak with you and hang out. It's really what this has become is just a hangout session. Um, there's such a fantastic group of folks here on this secondary channel. We're kind of like this little mystery channel just floating around. Um, and uh, I will be doing more lives on the main channel and 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 as as we get further down the path closer to the summer but for now i really like these these low-key ones because i can kind of keep you guys in touch where i am it doesn't feel i don't feel like i've disappeared off the face of the earth because sometimes i don't spend a lot of time on social media some weeks a lot of things are in motion uh for the channel and there's nobody more aware of, thank you, Angie. Thumbs up, thumbs up, help me out, helps me out. Uh, there's nobody no more aware of, of like uh, getting more videos done at a faster clip, at a faster pace. All of it's happening, all of it's happening, uh, but this is a very large transitional period uh, for me personally, and it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. Uh, but more importantly, it's a transitional period for the show. It's, it's important for the longevity and the success of the channel that we kind of, again, I'm going to use the analogy of breaking it and then repairing it in such a way where it's going to function better than it did previously. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do, trying to just branch out, spiral out, never leave those opportunities behind, uh, try to get a wider audience. Um, but uh, it's taking a little bit longer for me to put all the pieces together. Um, but we're getting closer and closer. And I got a lot of exciting surprises for you guys in the future. And a lot of things that I haven't even discovered what I'm going to do yet. Like, there's, there's still tons of time on my calendar that's empty. So 
we can discuss. We can. There's options for us to test it. And with this this health kick and this new little mini mini series, uh, is it? I'm gonna compile all of the episodes into one mini documentary. And uh, um, I think it's uh, I think it's it's an adventure that is certainly worth taking. Anyway, wow, talking too much. It's always the hardest part finding that perfect place to call it quits. So as always, I thank you for joining. I see all your comments here. I want to read Eric's real quick. I saw a couple, I saw, uh, yes, do homeworks, uh, the Harry Slatkin candles. They, th that, that would be happening. To what degree, I can't promise. My screen is getting very weird. I don't know if you guys are having the same problem, losing the connection. A uh, great live stream today says Travis. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Uh, you're always such a positive, positive voice in all of the platforms. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I hope you know that I'm sincere about that. Eric says in the fall, it would be great to see homework stuff too late for the current ones now since they will stop selling them in less than a week until fall. Yeah. Um, I just figured there's so many other wonderful folks out there talking about it. Uh, including Harry himself, right? Um, so it's, I just, I don't, I think there might be, if I were to start doing homeworks religiously, um, it might be an oversaturation of content. Um, I want to see other people, I want to see other YouTube people do different things. I don't, I don't think it's best that we're all covering the same things and doing like a Cisco neighbor kind of thing. If other people have homeworks covered and it's covered very well and it's in the hands of uh, people who, uh, with passionate souls who are talking about it uh, and sharing their opinions, uh, I, th I feel like my time is best used going in other directions. But that doesn't mean that I won't touch on homeworks. Um, yeah, it looked like the screen was melting. Uh, okay, so it wasn't just me. Um, by by Nancy scream was melting keep uh, keep it Yankee Shane says Casa see uh, we all have different opinions here uh, Yankees always been kind of my go-to that and the smaller companies which is a reminder if you didn't check out my cottage Wix video I posted it last night on the main channel cottage Wix uh, not only go out uh, and check out that video um, that was a fun one to film uh, but check out Cottage Wicks. Go by, say hello on social media. Go by and say, you know what? I found you through the candle enthusiasts. If you're not aware of them. If you're aware of them and you follow them, that's awesome. You probably do because they're very popular. But uh, by sh giving me a little shout out to them, let them know the video is working. And I, I, I got to meet the proprietor and the owner of Cottage Wicks, um, Jessica Rosario absolute sweetheart the, the the one of like you know it was just like it was just a, a brilliant little afternoon got to see uh, her shop it wasn't really a shop like uh, she was having like a um her shop was open for sales for a weekend she doesn't have a storefront i don't think at least not yet um but in that shop she showed a lot a little bit of behind the scenes filmed so much footage all of that footage was lost during the hard drive crash of 2018 and um so uh i finally got that video done without the supplemental footage of her actual shop and uh her on camera but i will be meeting up with jessica again uh we just have to work out scheduling but make sure you check out that video and like i said go by uh say hello no purchase necessary. Say hello, leave a comment, say hi. If you want, say the candle enthusiast or just tag me in your comment. Let them know the candle enthusiast sent you. Let them know that the video is working. That is what's important. And that goes with everything. That be Yankee Candle or Witch City Wicks or any other candle company that I'm talking about. Uh, it's essential for our growth. So thanks you, thank you again, all of you. Um, and those of you guys, Costa, did you mean 100% Yankee Candle, but keep the rest minimum? You show off Yankee Candle so well. Uh, yes, I will. I will. Um, you know, I'm just trying to get as much in before the Halloween stuff begins. Because once Halloween begins, there, be you know what happens. But I'm going to keep a, keep a nice lid on it this year. Keep it to a minimum. Um, and try to make my videos concise on Halloween. So I'm not putting a Halloween video after Halloween video. But um, 
right now it's cool before the storm. It's no the the, the fall preview hasn't come out yet. Um, so uh, I'll keep you guys updated on that. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you to all. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, especially to the main channel. Tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends. Living enthusiastically. If they're a health freak, tell them to come by, watch my videos, and criticize. If it gets them to watch it, I don't mind them criticizing the stuff that I'm doing. Get your friends to watch. Spread the word, spread the love. Let's grow together. Uh, thank you to everybody. And I will be seeing you guys soon. Thanks for joining. Have a good Sunday. Bye-bye now.